Right. Good morning, uh, Paul, Divya. Good morning. Uh, right. Uh, let's uh, start our session this morning. Um, let's begin with a time of prayer. Uh, so uh, I'll just pray and then we'll begin with our class. Right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to just come together and learn from your word. And pray, God, that even as we learn together, that Holy Spirit, you will teach us you will empower us, Lord. We open our hearts to you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, I'm not sure why the others haven't joined yet, but we will start. So last week, we've been talking about uh, workplace relationships, right? Um, uh, some of the points that we covered was uh, maintaining love, right? Love is the basis of our work, our ministry. Uh, so I remember that we need to love people. Right, more than well, more than looking to at them as uh, just mute. Right, uh, more than looking at them as just you know people who need to get tasks fulfilled. You need to love them, right? Uh, when we have the opportunity to bless somebody, bless them. Be sensitive to people's needs. Uh, don't forget to say please, your sorries, your thank yous, workplace etiquettes. Be an encourager, uh, you know, uh, and and be careful who influences you, right? especially in the workplace. There are, there are different kinds of people, different attitudes, different temperaments, people of different faiths. Uh, be careful what influences you. Now, that is a choice that is up to us, right? Uh, know your boundaries in corporate socializing. Uh, we talked about that, right? Uh, there are boundaries. We spend about 40 hours in the workplace 40 to 50 hours in the workplace and uh, there are boundaries that we must set why because you know we know that we are in the workplace and you know families back at home or they're doing other things so uh, very important to know that you know god is watching us right so just to be aware of that uh, honor your boss even the bosses who are rude and harsh uh, develop workplace etiquettes uh, there will be times when the heat is on, meaning there are, you know, times when we have to, there's a lot of work pressure, there is, uh, there's pressure on every side, uh, or there is arguments and strife happening in the team or within the organization, behave wisely, right, during that time. Uh, stay away from meaningless arguments. Um, you know, there will be times when there are arguments and uh, I always say this, right? And I always think about this, you know, choose the battles that you fight, right? You don't have to fight every battle. Right? You choose the battle you have to fight. If you feel that this is only a waste of time, you don't have to, uh, you know, try to fight that battle, right? Uh, not all battles are worth fighting. Right? always remember that, right? So that's where we stop. We have a few more points in this chapter. And then we just uh, get into the next chapter, which is planning and execution. Uh, but let's look at these few more points that are left. Uh, when a co-worker underperforms or violates rules, handle it cautiously. Proverbs 30 and verse 10. Don't blow the whistle on your fellow workers behind their backs. They'll accuse you of being underhanded. And then you'll be the guilty one. Now. There will be times, you know, especially if you're leading a team and or, or you're part of a team, you know that in the workplace um, there's an underperforming teammate or, the, uh, or, or there are some others who violate company policies, company rules. Uh, whenever possible, first thing, address the matter personally, directly with that person, right? And uh, uh, ask them, is this what is... Is this what is happening? Uh, is this, you know, this is what it is. Uh, we found out that you're doing this wrong. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, and this is something that is against the company rules, against the organization. Talk to the person one on one, right? Then, if you see that there's no uh, improvement or there's no change, you can take it up uh, either to the HR or the legal uh, department, right? But this is a dif difficult thing to do in the organization. Right? Of course, we want to be gracious as leaders, but especially when it comes to ministry. Uh, what if there are underperforming employees? Right? Now, how do we rate performance, especially in ministry? 
there are ways right um, we can't say hey you know uh, it's god's grace god will uh, you know enable us yes that's true but uh, we have to put our hand to the plow we have to work hard we have to uh, you know whether whether it is you know ministering to people in the church um, in the life group in a small group setting wherever it is like right? whatever ministry it may be it is hard work right and you have a team and if you feel that hey uh, you know uh, sometimes you may feel that the other person is not putting in 100 percent effort um, then it's wise to just ask them to bring them out talk to them in person try to find out what's happening um, especially if it's ministry right you know we may have to handle it a little bit differently than how we handle it in the corporate sector but uh, uh, but if there is violation of rules especially like you know in terms of ministry if you see uh, there's money you know, if there's a problem with handling money if you see that people are engaging in you know, uh, uh, you know things that are you know uh, immorally not good not uh, not right in the eyes of god there and you see that there it's it's open in the church uh, immediately immediately take action right uh, never look at this and you know especially when it comes to ministry never look at it and say okay it'll it'll get solved on its own no we have to resolve those matters we cannot take the dust and put it under the carpet right so when even when we handle it you handle it immediately you handle it cautiously right i'll be wise ask god for wisdom on how to handle that situation right uh next one is feedback pay attention and pay close attention to it uh, proverbs 27 21 the refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold and a man is valued by what others say of him right uh, let's read even proverbs 26 16 a lazy person will think he is smarter than seven men who can give good reasons for their opinions right now this is very important i think uh this is something that all of us should be no matter where we are in life whether we are high up the ladder in the corporate sector whether we are up the ladder in the ministry feedback is very important right so pay attention to feedback and uh do not treat feedback lightly uh, feedback and input that is coming from, especially you know, people who are seasoned and people who are experienced in whatever they are doing. Uh, you know, if they give you feedback, do not treat it with contempt. Right? Be willing to listen. Be willing to learn. Be willing to make changes. And uh, very important, don't try to defend yourself. No, I did it because of this. Right? Or I did it because you know, uh, uh, I do it this way because of this. And so what happens is the person who's giving you feedback will say, hey, I, I gave the feedback, but I see that he's always been, he or she is just defending whatever I'm trying to say. Um, and what happens? We will not improve. There'll be no growth. There'll be no skill. Uh, and we'll remain stacked in the same position. Right? Uh, now, this happens especially, you know, when people give feedback and you know, you've grown up the ladder. When people give feedback, um, you know, uh, sometimes we take it the wrong way. Say, hey, uh, how come? You know, for example, somebody can come and say, uh, you know what, uh, while you are preaching, um, you know, for example, a person, a pastor may be preaching for the last 10, 15 years, but somebody from the church may come and say, hey, you know, when you're preaching, this is something that I noticed. You know, uh, the example, right? This is just an example. Uh, I, I feel that you're talking too fast. Okay. Or another feedback when they say, uh, I feel that, you know, uh, as you give these Bible verses, you can give uh, uh, an illustration or an example so that we all can understand. Now, that is good feedback. It's, 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 it's not uh, feedback that is not uh, that is wrong. It's good feedback. It's constructive feedback. But the other person may not be a person who's gone you know preaching for many years or may not even have stood in front of people and you know spoken about anything now the wrong thing to do is to say hey i've been preaching for 10 15 years how can you tell me that this is what i must do 
you yourself have not done it now that is the wrong way to look at things you take it is it constructive feedback is it something that's going to help me yes it is if you if if i add a few illustrations if i talk a little slower many more people can understand if i'm just talking fast in a sermon uh, maybe people who cannot grasp it so take feedback pay attention to it and as leaders even now we receive feedback right uh, receive feedback we are open to feedback from church uh, from our church folks from from our students right you you know you also you're free to give us feedback as teachers right so why because we want to learn we want to do ourselves right and we it's not like you know you give us feedback and we just take it and just uh, put it away no we pay close attention to it we we try to work on it and improve ourselves right <clears throat> Next one, always receive correction with a good attitude. Proverbs 12 and verse 1. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. Right? Uh, there are a couple of verses there. Proverbs 13, 18. Poverty and shame will come to him who disdains correction, but he who regards a rebuke will be honored. You see the importance of receiving correction with a good attitude. You know, in a day and age that we are living in now, uh, uh, you know, correction is something that you know they feel offended. People get offended. Uh, um, you know, if we tell them here, this is how we can do it, people get offended. How can you say this? Uh, um, not everyone, but you know, because people, the attitude of Working, you know, either ministry or working professionals have changed. You know, I'll do it this way. But they're so used to doing it in a certain way. But if there's correction given, they may not receive it in the right attitude. Receiving correction is the right attitude and willing to change is and, and making improvements is the best attitude that you can have. Don't shy away from those who administer correction in your life, which means if you know that a person always, you know, he's always trying to uh, tell you what to do or bring, uh, uh, you know, give you inputs and ideas or bring corrections, don't run away from them. They, they, the people who correct you are the ones who care enough and they want to see you grow, they want to develop, they want to see you become a better person. So build a rapport with them. Be with them, build a relationship with them, continue to receive input, and apply it. You know, in your, you know, in your life. And I remember this, right? Oh, uh, there was this elderly couple in church. Uh, uh, this is in uh, ABC in in Mangalore. Like this elderly couple in church, and uh, you know, uh, uh, every Sunday we, uh, we were preaching on Sundays, so. Uh, Initially, they never came up to me because we were new uh, to Mangalore and they didn't want to offend me. Uh, but they came up to me one Sunday and they said, you know, Pastor, uh, I want to share this with you, but please don't take it in the wrong way. I said, yeah, sure, please feel free to share. And then they said, uh, you know, you, we, we, you know, one of the things we noticed is uh, the message is very good. Right? Uh, your examples are also good. But sometimes you talk you talk so fast we can't understand you're so fast right sometimes you just tell the verse and you read the verse so by the time we open to that portion of the bible the verse is already over right? of course we have a presentation but there are some of them so in my mind hey the presentation is there the the, the uh, bible verses there they can see it there but in, so in my mind, it's there. The verse is there. They can see it. But there are, I didn't realize that there are others who would like to mark or who would like to mark it on their Bibles or like to make notes while, you know, while the sermon is going on. Uh, and they said to me, can you be a little slow, please? And, but after that, they were feeling so bad. And I, I hope you're not. I said, no, not at all. I remember uh, uh, taking that feedback because it's important. I'm not preaching to impress everyone. The preaching is to 
build the church. It is for the church. It's not to fill up time on Sunday morning. So I realized, hey, I cannot do this. I need to make sure that my preaching is moderate. I should not be too fast. So it was a it was a decision or it, it was a act that I intentionally had to work on the feedback, right? Because by nature, I may be a fast talker, but I had to work on it. And over time, uh, it, it's become a habit. Every time I preach, I try to slow down. Right now, was it good feedback? Very good feedback. If what if he had not told me, I would have continued on and on, just you know, talking fast. Uh, so all these feedbacks, and it could be simple feedbacks. It need not be something very spiritual. Correction need not be very spiritual. Right? Sometimes it's just the way you talk to people. Right. Uh, all these things matter. So, as students of the word, always be open to correction in a good attitude, just so that we improve and better ourselves. Right? Uh, this now initially, well, I wanted to add this. Initially, for example, we start off in the workplace. We are a new joinee or maybe we are new in the ministry, we just started ministry, receiving correction will be very open. And say, oh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for giving me the feedback. I'll apply it. But what happens when you're tenured in the ministry? What happens when you're 15 years in the ministry or 15 years in the workplace? Things change. Hey, how can you tell me in 15 years I'm doing this? That is wrong, right? Whether it's 15 years or 30 years or you know 30 days, be willing to receive feedback. And be careful before you stand as a guarantor. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 1 to 4. My son, if you become surety for your friend, if you have shaken hands and pledged for a stranger, you are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. So do this, my son, and deliver yourself. For you have come to the into the hand of your friend. Go and humble yourself. Plead with your friend. Give no sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. Now let's look at the other one. Proverbs 11, 15. He who is a surety for a stranger will suffer, but one who hates being surety is secure. Right? As we develop workplace relationships, there will be times when colleagues may ask you to stand as a guarantor, right? for example, for a purchase, for a loan, uh, or for a, for a business venture. Now, probably you know, you're working with this man or woman for 10 years. Say, so, hey, we've built a good relationship, right? Uh, but I would always say, be careful before you stand as a guarantor. Right? Be careful before you put your name anywhere. Remember that people can change. Right? Be things can change. You know, situations can change. People change according to situations. Right? The best example is look at look at Judas. He was with Jesus. He was with the Son of God. Walking with Jesus, three and a half years, the situation came, he betrayed him. Right? So you can never say that, hey, no, this person is my brother and he will never. I mean, I'm not saying that don't trust anybody. That's not what the attitude is. But think about it, pray about it, be wise, right? Especially when it comes to, you know, uh, money or when it comes to things like starting new businesses, new ventures, um, you know, uh, third parties, right? Uh, you want to start something, you know, think about who you stand as a character. Now, that is a personal choice, right? Now, I cannot say don't stand. But there will be times if you have to stand, if you know it's your maybe your, uh, your own relatives or your family members, you have complete trust on them, go ahead. Uh, but just think and be wise about it.
right? because it should not affect your life later on. Okay, last point. Avoid astrologers, horoscopes, fortune tellers, and palm readers. Jeremiah 10 and verse 2. Thus says the Lord, do not learn the ways of the Gentiles. Do not be dismayed at the signs of the heaven. For the Gentiles are dismayed at them. You know, at the times that we are now, astrology, horoscopes, palm reading, um, when all these practices are, uh, they've been prevalent for many years. But now, you know, astrologers have some uh, new tools and I don't know what they are, but, uh, you know, they have some new ideologies and uh, fortune telling. You know, there's, there are some where they have these exotic birds. Uh, I haven't really gone deep into learning that, but there are some exotic birds. And these exotic birds will, you know, these uh, they would put those cards down and these, depending on the value of the bird and and what they pick up is what, you know, the card will show whether, uh, uh, you know, and these cards have different pictures. Each picture means something. So if you're going to, a, you know, it, it would, so all kinds of new things, avoid all of that. Whether it is business, ministry, or of course, in ministry, we wouldn't do that. But there'll be times when your colleagues may say, hey, why don't we you know, just check? It's okay. You go to a palm reader, let him read your palm. And let him say something. Maybe he may talk about what your next business ventures or what you're going to do, uh, or how your family is going to be blessed and all of those things. Excuse yourself out of that. Let's say, hey, I'm sorry. I'm a Christian. And these are things that I don't believe in. And I don't want to engage in this. You are my friend. I respect you as a person. But I don't respect or I don't want to involve myself in this decision. We still be friends. Right? Uh, now, sometimes people may avoid wanting to be with you after this encounter. That's OK. Right. Uh, uh, know that you've done right in the eyes of God. Right. Uh, do it. There's nothing wrong in making your stand clear. Do it lovingly, do it humbly and not arrogantly. And do not do it in a self-righteous manner. Like so, for example, your friends say, hey, you know what? Everything's going wrong in my life. I'm just going to go to this astrologer or this fortune teller or palm reader and just see what they have to say. Why, why am I going through all of this? Now, don't say no, the wrong way to deal with that is to say, hey, you know, God knows everything. You know, I'm the one I, I, I can I can pray. God will tell you, tell me everything. Um, you know, those people, what do they do? They don't know anything. How can they read your palm? There are lines in your palm. What can they say from the lines? So those are all the wrong ways uh, to deal with it. Two ways. One is you can humbly say, hey, uh, this is something that I don't believe in. Uh, uh, and secondly, uh, you know, I, I I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. And this is what I, I normally do when I go through situations. It also gives you an opportunity to share the gospel. And to say, you know, when I go through challenges, some of the things that I do is I just pray to the Lord. I pray to God and ask him to give me guidance because this is what the Bible says. And it gives you an opportunity to... Uh, minister the moment we are rude and arrogant we cannot speak into their lives we cannot expect them to sit and listen to us sharing of the gospel with them they're not going to listen right uh, I, in fact it gives us a wonderful opportunity to minister the gospel never say don't go they're all you know wrong whatever they say let them go but we do a follow up and you can always say hey you went was there any uh, response from that uh, you know, I was thinking about what you were saying, that you're going through these problems. You know, uh, this is what I just wanted to share this word, um, this Bible verse, you know, uh, this is what it says. So maybe you can think about it. It's just a wonderful opportunity. Right. So we end with this chapter, chapter nine, workplace relationships. So each one of us, um, whether in ministry, whether in the workplace, let us learn to build healthy relationships and let us learn. Uh, to truly be salt and light, you know, wherever we are uh, with, the, with our relationships. In the book of John, it says that uh, they shall know you 
by your fruit and uh, by this they will know what by this is talking about the love of god uh, by this love they will know that they, you are my children so it's such a amazing opportunity for each one of us to you know to really be a blessing to people so let's go into the next chapter it's a very small chapter we'll try and finish it uh, planning and execution right uh, any questions any questions before we go ahead Okay, so shall we go ahead? Chapter 10, planning and execution. Now, planning is, is always there, right? We, we always plan whether, whether it is family, whether it is ministry, whether it is business, whether it is a vacation, whether it is a weekend, whether it's a one day, just a day, sometimes we, you know, planning is involved in everything. Not even a day, if you're having a three hour meeting, there needs to be planning. Right? Planning is very important. But you must re remember that execution also is, is the key. A great strategy, brilliant idea, technology and innovation and all these things are wonderful. But if there's no execution all these ideas strategies innovations will be of no use now it's important to plan it's important to execute those plans all right so let's look at a few scriptural insights on what is required of us when we talk about planning and execution all right first one determine the counsel of the lord all right uh, proverbs 19 21 we humans keep brainstorming options and plans but god's purpose prevails that's the message translation they always have these wonderful words uh other versions say uh, many other plans in a man's heart but it's the lord's will that prevails but i like the message translation we humans keep brainstorming options and plans but god's purpose prevails so as we plan get god involved in our planning Invite him to direct our thoughts and discussions to what he wants us to do. Right now, uh, for if, for example, it's a you want to start your own business, a small business. So you sit down and you pray and you say, God, this has been in my heart for two years, and I believe now is the time that you want me to step out. So here are the things I've done. I've started my, I've registered the trust. I've done what I need to do. Now, Lord, tell me how should I begin? Should I do online promotions for my business? Should I get a team involved and teach them first? Or should I, uh, should I just start off small with what I have? What, what should I do? Determine the counsel of the Lord. Right? Uh, because we can plan, plan, plan. But finally, it's the Lord's will that prevails. Now, we must not use it the other way by saying, hey, Lord's will will prevail, so I don't want to plan. That's wrong. And that's very wrong. When we know that, right? Now look at you know, look at the Bible. We've seen that God is a God of plan. Uh, when he came out, brought the people out of Egypt. Being God, he still planned. He knew what he's going to do, but he planned it out for them. He told Moses, Moses, here's what you do. You take your people, take the people of Israel. You go through this way. You stop in this place. When you put your tents, you make it this way. Order, structure, planning, everything involved. And he told Joshua, Joshua, when you're going to break down the walls of Jericho, don't, don't do anything. Just walk around. Use this strategy. Right? Walk around that wall. On the seventh day, on the seventh time, you blow your trumpets and horns and you praise God, the walls will come down. Determine the counsel of the Lord. God, is it the right time? Is it the right place? Uh, now, I'm not saying that the heavens are going to open and God will speak out and say, yes, this is the right time. Please start now. No, that's yeah, not going to happen. Uh, but he, we've got his word. Three ways God speaks to us. Three primary ways. One is our conscience. Two is in our spirit. Three is, our, is the word of God. 
right? Three primary ways. Of course, there are many other ways. He can speak through a prophetic word, through somebody else, through a vision, through a dream. Um, well, but three of the you know most important primary ways. So, um, if you're in a place where you have to make important decisions, right? determine the counsel of the Lord, right? Um, and I've used this example before. You know, when we got the opportunity to, you know, Pastor asked us, "Do you want to go to Mangalore?" I mean, Mangalore is about you know 400 kilometers away from Bangalore, uh, but it's a whole new city, different people, different language, uh, different language, but different everything is different, right? All my life I've been in Bangalore, and uh, you know, uh, I've got my family's here, all my extended family. So I thought to myself, God, is this the right choice? Is this something that I must do? So what do we do? We determine the counsel of the Lord, God. This is something that I must do. So it could be even the small decisions determine the counsel of the Lord. Plan and execute after that. Get the right people involved. Very important. Proverbs 2018. Form your purpose by asking for counsel, then carry it out using all the help you can get. Get the key people to be involved in the planning process. Right now, remember that. You know, uh, now, if you have a core team, right, people who can contribute with their discussions, with their ideas, with their plannings, are are very important. Share the plan with them. Right, if you have team members, and you feel that out of twenty of them, there are two, three of them who are, uh, you know, can really give good input, bring them. Right. Uh, as a team leader, bring them forward and you know, hey, this is what I thought of. What do you think? Should we plan this? Should we go ahead with this? Nothing wrong in doing that. Right? It's not like you're showing favoritism. It's just that they are skilled in it. They have better experience. They have better ideas, strategies. Uh, so use and get the right people involved in planning. Right? Uh, people at all levels will eventually get to know so you have a core team and then when a decision is made everyone you can share it with everyone right so get the right people involved in planning now when it comes to ministry uh, so for example you want to do a missions trip to a certain place you need to get the right people involved in planning you can't just uh, have a mission trip just say okay mission trip we're going no there needs to be Ticket bookings, venue booking, coordinating uh, with the people who are involved in terms of the conference uh, for uh, uh, travel and stay. Uh, so much is involved, but you need the right people. You can't have somebody in the team saying, hey, hey, I thought you were booking the tickets. Oh, no, uh, but you didn't mention that in the email. Oh, all these things. No, you need to have the right people. Uh, it just avoids confusion that avoids you know delaying of uh, execution of whatever is planned and, uh, next one look ahead preempt the unexpected let's look at this proverbs 22 and see will pass on an hour right so there will be times when you may have to plan and decide things ahead of time Right. And uh, in the corporate sector, they normally say trial and error. But you try something, it works, wonderful, go ahead. If it doesn't work, trial and error, try something else. Right. Uh, so one of the important part of planning is be preemptive. Anticipate things. Right. Uh, being prepared with the course of action or uh, in, in the event of certain challenges that may come up, right? Uh, now, for example, there are some things we can't preempt or we can't expect. Nobody expected a, uh, a COVID uh, you know, pandemic to uh, hit globally, right? Nobody expected it. Almost two years, we were out. Uh, things were, you know, we were on and off, right? Uh, almost two years, right? Uh, uh, so there are some things that can be expected, but one good thing that happened was the moment the pandemic hit, uh, 
you know, we realize that a lot of these corporate sectors, you know, they, they, they start thinking ahead. Okay, so what must we do? Let's let's okay, let's begin to you know look at this whole thing of work from home. Let's move things from home. Everyone stay at home, work, give more eff efficiency, give more productivity. Um, these are some things that can be done, right? So look ahead. So now, you know, people in the corporate sector are saying, we, 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 you know, what are they doing now? They, especially here in our nation, they're giving away all the office uh, rental spaces. They say, we don't want to pay these high amounts of rent or lease that they are paying. What's the use? Because nobody's coming to office. Everyone are working for is better. So they're giving it away. So they're being preempted. They're thinking ahead. We don't need these big offices because everyone are being more effective and productive working from home. Right. So there will be times, right? Uh, look at this uh, whole thing of, you know, the the pandemic brought this online thing. You know, Bible. Uh, sorry, uh, the uh, ministries went online. Bible colleges. Uh, all kinds of ministries, cell groups are meeting online. Everything is, you know, uh, it may not be always something that we'd like, but uh, at least there's an opportunity to get together. Right now, if we look ahead, sometimes now, now we realize that hey, people don't want to travel. Get away from and sit in a tent. Uh, it could be just a small one-hour prayer meeting. Are you willing to attend online? Why should I travel one hour to get to the place for a one hour prayer? Okay, you have it online. We will we will be there. We'll partake. We will join together. We will pray together. So things are changing, and as leaders, we need to be preemptive. Okay. Next one. Some seasons are more intense than others. He who gathers in summer is a wise son. He who sleeps in harvest is a son who causes shame. Right now, this usually happens both in business and in ministry. There are seasons where things are going fine. But then there will also be seasons when you need to really step up. Right? Uh, and in the corporate sector, it's usually Maybe you know from uh, Feb to April, May is when you know those intense right? uh, year endings. Uh, they need to show their targets, meet their targets, and all of that. Uh, and so those are intense times. You can't expect uh, you know maybe employees saying, "Hey, I'm traveling to another country, so I need uh, uh, you know two months break." No, they can do it, but then the you know, the team will be like, hey, what is this? You know that this time is the most important time and it's a season of intense work. How can you take leave? Right? They may uh, pin it back at you. So uh, during this time, execution is important. Right? Uh, just just uh, remember that it's a season. Right? And what about us in ministry? Of course, yeah, throughout the year we have things that we do. Uh, but if you look at Christmas time, or Easter time, these are times when we have additional things. Right? Many more services, more things to do, Good Friday, Easter, um, and then you have these Easter programs, you have children's church trying to do some programs, and uh, a lot of event-related things, more work, uh, more tasks to get done, more planning, more execution. Look at Christmas, or you have your Christmas outreaches, you have your, uh, you know, your programs, and college campuses, you have programs at uh, apartment complexes, residential areas, you have programs in the uh, in the malls, or uh, you know, you have carols on the street, uh, street carols, and then you have uh, place, you know, life groups and cell groups going to orphanages, children's homes, being a blessing to them. So intense times. And after Christmas, things go back to normal, you know, or the beginning of the year. So, so remember those seasons are good. Uh, get teams together, get them to work hard in that season, and to get things done. Right? Uh, execution can can be messy and destructive, so make sure that it's done the right way. Uh, 
pursue your goals without making a mess of it, plan it out, right? stay focused and avoid distractions. Right? Uh, the Proverbs 12, 11, the one who stays on the job has food on the table, the witless chase whims and fancies. Right now, in the middle of an execution, sometimes we may, you know, uh, avoid those distractions of chasing other things. When you know that there's a certain thing that I have to get done, there's a certain task, um, all of a sudden these other whims and fancies may come into our mind. Avoid those distractions. Right? Avoid those, uh, you know, those ideas or those thoughts that may come. Those ideas may be good, but it's just not necessarily needed to be there at that time. But if you feel that the idea is a good one, which can be implemented for the task that you are working on, then do it. But if it's a just a general, generic idea, talking about thinking about something else, um, and not for the task that is at hand at that time, avoid those distractions. Probably you can make a note of it and forget it. Fulfill the task that is ahead of you. Right. So, for example, by we call it students, I you know, okay, it's the, the semester is ending. I need to just prepare myself for the semester. Now, this uh, suddenly we may get other ideas, get other thoughts. It's good, but we try to keep it aside and say, hey, this is. This, I just want to focus on this. It's just the season right now. The season will pass, right? Uh, we will go into the next season. So avoid distractions. Uh, don't just talk. Act. But act on what is really important. Proverbs 14, 23. In all labor, there is profit. But idle chatter leads only to poverty. Now, execution is action. But action must be prioritized. Right? What is the most important task? There are five tasks that need to be get, to get done. In this three months, five tasks are assigned to me. Or you know that you have to do these five tasks. Prioritize. Act on what is most important first. Right? So one is, for example, uh, I need to you know, have a team bonding session. Two, I need to uh, first build a stronger team. Or three, I need to increase my team. So, you know, okay, first thing is let me increase the team, let me build a stronger team. Then we can have a team bonding session. And then we can have a team, uh, you know, whatever, team uh, building session or, or, or uh, team outing and all of those things. So you, you see there are five things or three things. What is most important? Act on that first. Right? Choose the, the right one first. Right? Engage your team. Together, everyone achieves more, right? Two are better than one. Uh, of course, you have your core team making the plan, but engage your team in the planning. Engage your team to pursue the vision, right? And, and pro progress can be monitored and shared with everyone, right? Uh, so, for example, pending tasks, challenges, delays, corrections, everything can be shared together. Uh, uh, and then you'll see that the organization is getting stronger uh, and, and team power, teamwork. We talked about the ants, right? How teamwork uh, is important uh, because together everyone achieves more. Whether business, whether ministry, we achieve more, right? Uh, accountability. Stay the course when the going gets tough. Proverbs 24 and verse 10, if you are weak in a crisis, you are weak indeed, right? So there, like we said, you know, there, there will be tough times. Uh, there will be difficult times. There'll be times you feel like, oh man, I want to quit. Or, uh, there'll be times you feel like, uh, you know, this, this person is, uh, this person or the situation is coming on and on and on. Uh, but look at these challenges. Uh, and let it be a motivation to us. Hey, I know that with me, I know that I can overcome this challenge, and I know that you know uh, I'll be able to get through this difficult time. Right? Stay motivated. Stay encouraged. 
um, that's why some lessons learned are more valuable than the profits gained, right? Uh, uh, when, when you know, the process of execution is a great teacher, right? The, when we are learning something, we make mistakes. You know, all of us know that, uh, you know, very wise saying, failure is the stepping stone to success. You know, we, we fail or we fall, and the valuable lesson that we learn from that is is going to be in, with us for, almost for the rest of our lives. And I can share many, many lessons that I learned in during the time of execution of tasks. Uh, and I learned those lessons, and I was like, oh, I, I shouldn't have done it this way. But in one way, it's, I did it that way. It was wrong, but I learned it the hard way. And I'm, I'm glad that it's a valuable lesson. It's more than, you know, the money or it's more than, uh, you know, just uh, profit in business or, but it's a, a valuable lesson learned that stays with us, right? Uh, so some lessons learned are very, very important. It just stays with us. And finally, above all else, let God be in charge. Proverbs 16, 3, put God in charge of your work what you've planned will take place stay calm through the ups and downs right uh and let god be in charge right uh, now let god be in charge doesn't mean we don't do anything right? but we thank god uh, you are in control over everything commit your ways to the lord and he will direct our paths right so we were able to complete this chapter we will stop and we will meet next week and we will pick up from the next chapter and i hope this has been uh, you know uh, even as we're going through the entirety of this course uh, feel free to you know you can even ask questions in between feel free to share your thoughts and uh, i'm sure we can learn more together All right thank you so much uh, let's just quickly close with a word of prayer uh, right let's pray Father, we want to thank you. Thank you for what we have learned today, God. And we pray, Lord, that you will enable us to plan, to execute, and be effective in everything that has been assigned to us. And Lord, we pray that we'll commit everything into your hands. That, Lord, you are the author, the completer of our faith. We thank you for this wonderful opportunity, Lord. And I pray for each and every student that you will minister to them and bless them, Lord. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week ahead. I'll see you next week. God bless.